Hello and welcome to Super Base Launch Week number 6. I can't believe we're already at day 3. If you missed any of the announcements over the last couple of days, we dropped Docs v2, written entirely in Next.js, and some brand new image optimization features for Superbase Storage. To make sure that you don't miss them again, you should totally subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter. Today is all about auth, and we're going to sit down with Kang Ming and Joel and talk through some of the awesome new multi-factor authentication flows that they've been working on. Let's get into it. Today we're talking all about auth, uh, and I am joined by Kang Ming and Joel, who work on the auth team and are going to help me understand all of these new awesome things that we're launching. Uh, so, quick introduction. My name is John Myers. I'm a developer advocate at Superbase. Um, yeah, I'm Kang Ming, and I am a software engineer working on the auth service at Superbase. Uh, yeah, so I'm Joel. Uh, I'm also a software engineer working on the auth team. Awesome. And as I said today, we are talking all about auth. And so we are launching some uh, very interesting things around multi-factor authentication, which we're going to learn all about now. So Joel, can you tell me what problem does this solve? What is MFA and, and why do we need it? All right. Thanks, John. Uh, so MFA is actually used to add an addi additional layer of security onto our application. So it's uh, often used uh, for three main reasons. The first would be to add an ad additional layer of security for peace of mind. Um, the second would be to meet, to meet compliance requirements, such as SOC 2. And the third would be you know, for client requirements. Um, yeah. OK, sure. So what is multi-factor authentication? Kang Ming, can you help me understand what it is? What does it stand for? Hmm, yeah, I think that's uh, something I, I, I think it's uh, it would, it's, I wouldn't say it's complicated, but usually it comprises of like a few factors that you need to verify before you are actually like authenticated on the platform. Um, it's something you have, which can be a TOTP device. And a TOTP device is something that we are, us developers are quite familiar with. Um, it allows you to scan like a QR code and it will store, um, this QR code is actually like the secret which will be stored on your device and um, which is mainly your phone. And when you click on um, the device, like you can basically see um, a six digit code that is generated based on the time and the secret, which is the QR code you scanned. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, I am uh, all too familiar with that, that anxiety feeling of like, oh God, I got to enter this number in before the timer runs out. Uh, I've seen that way too many times. Uh, but yeah, so I, I guess the idea is that, so this is multi-factor authentication. So you need two, two factors of authentication, two ways to, to sign in. So um, when previously you may have just implemented like email and password or OAuth with GitHub or something like that um, in your applications built on top of Superbase, we can now uh, kick off an additional flow for um, a second device that you need to log in to be able to use that application. So what does this process actually look like in Superbase? Joel, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure thing, John. Um, so like most other MFA implementations, there are two key steps. The first would be an enrollment step uh, where we get the authenticator to save the shared secret, which is stored on the server by scanning the QR code, which actually encodes the secret. Now, um, so the second step, after that would be the verification process, where the authenticator actually makes use of the secret together with a given timestamp to generate a six-digit code, which uh, the user then enters into um, you know, a form field um, in order to verify that you know, the secret stored on the device is the same as the secret uh, stored on the server. Um, and so this will allow the user to log in. At Superbase, we actually use the notion of a authenticator assurance level so a authentication assurance level is actually a standard uh, device to indicate the degree of certainty about a user's identity. So for instance, uh, an AAL1 claim might indicate that you know, a user has signed in um, but not undergone MFA verification. And an, MF, uh, an AAL2 claim would indicate that a user has signed in and completed MFA verification. Here at Superbase, we actually make use of the authentication assurance levels to perform MFA enforcement. 
And we do so by using uh, role-level security policies. Uh, so RLS policies are a built-in feature of Postgres. Um, and by writing an RLS policy, you can actually restrict access to a table based on whether a user has an AL1 claim or an AL2 claim. Uh, this will be further covered in the demo later. Awesome. Yeah, that is really cool. So it's not just about that initial stage of like authenticating the user and that, that first point where they log in. It's not just like a different experience for them to go through. You can actually like pull this data out at those different points throughout all of the Superbase environment. So I'm assuming, as you said, row-level security policies, and I'm assuming like Postgres functions and all of those things that you can run within your, uh, within your like Superbase ecosystem will all be able to kind of query uh, what their AL level is. AL level? L is level, but whether they're an AL1 or an AL2, so whether they have uh, single factor authentication or multi-factor authentication enabled. Is that right? Perfect, John. That's exactly right. That is very cool. Well, I would love to see a demo. Uh, Kang Ming is going to take us through uh, how you actually do this in Superbase. Sure, sounds good. So um, as you can see over here, we basically have a typical like profile settings page you would expect to see when you log into an app. Um, I have logged in here with my Superbase email and over here you can see the authentication assurance level. This is just for us to take a look at how this is changing when we set up 2FA. Um, so over here you can see that the type, we currently only support an authenticated app, which is um, the TOTP uh, factor that we mentioned. And the status over here is, is not configured yet. So let's go ahead and start configuring it. So I'm going to start scanning um, the QR code. Oh, that's cool. So this, this QR code is generated like by Superbase. We don't need to do anything to implement this. Yeah, it's generated by us and we return it in an SVG format. So um, you can basically, you can scale up and the resolution will basically look the same. So I'm just going to scan the QR code and enter the passcode. So if you are unable to scan the QR code for some reason, that's, we also provide a setup key which you can add to your Authenticator app, all right? And now I've registered and you can see that immediately the Authenticator Assurance level has changed to AL2 and the status um, shows that, yeah, the factor has been verified. So let's proceed to take a look at the enforcement um, when the user tries to like log in again. So now I'm going to try logging in. And yeah, now I'm prompted to enter my six digit like code again. Oh, that's cool. So you don't even like, it's not creating like a separate account or anything like that. This is just like adding two factor authentication to an existing account or um, upping an existing user, uh, upping them from an AL1 user to an AL2 user. Yeah, you can think of it as like an additional layer. And basically what's happening in the background is, is checking that, oh, um, the current user has, um, has basically activated a second level of authentication, which is the AL2. And currently at this step, the AL level is at AL1. So it'll prompt me to basically enter um, the code because it knows that I have MFA enabled. And after I've entered it, yeah. If it's the right code, I'll be able to log in. Um, so the one other thing that's pretty cool is that we allow you to um, basically send the AL level to the role level security um, policy um, in Postgres. And this allows you to basically have more granular control over which parts of your application you want to enable MFA on. Um, so for example, we can hit to the dashboard over here and we just have a simple like uh, button here if it shows you a surprise if you have um, 2FA enabled. And right now, if I click this, it will return me a picture, a nice scenic picture of a dog staring to the sunset. Um, and this is actually protected um, using RLS. As you can see, if we go to my Superbase project, you can see that I have a storage um, policy um, over here. And it's checking that the JWT sent has an AL claim, and the AL claim has to be um, an AL2 claim. Yeah. Right. So, so then if you were to remove that from that user, um, 
would they then not be able to see their special doggo surprise? Yeah, so if I head back to the settings and we go ahead and remove the um, factor and we go back to the dashboard and we click this, you'll basically see that, yeah, you have to enable 2FA. And this is actually um, rejected by the ROS policy. It's not returning me anything. Um, and I have to go back here and set it up again. Yeah. That's so cool. And awesome that you can, uh, like it doesn't, um, change your user at all. Like you can enable it and then disable it. Um, and yeah, it's just adding that extra layer rather than um, like, you know, migrating your user from a one factor authentication user to a two factor authentication user and then they can't go back. Um, it looks like it's very simple to kind of toggle that on and off. Uh, that is very cool. Thank you so much for taking us through this demo and thank you for helping me and everyone else understand a little bit more about MFA. Uh, what it is and why it's important. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to add this to my application and, and go deeper. And if you do want to go a little bit deeper, check out the blog post below, uh, which goes into much more depth about what MFA is as, as well as uh, how we've implemented it here at Superbase and how you can use it um, as a user of Superbase. But once again, thank you so much, Kang Ming. Thank you so much, Joel. And I will see you soon. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, John. It's uh, our pleasure. Awesome. I am so excited to implement MFA in my Superbase apps and make them that much more secure. Now, if you're feeling insecure about missing some of those announcements this week, then make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash superbase and hit that little notification bell. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash superbase. This is where we'll be posting more info about each of these launches as well as our top tier world famous memes. And join our community Discord over at discord.superbase.com to chat with over 10,000 folks who are also building cool things with Superbase. We'll be kicking off a Twitter space shortly to answer all the questions you might have around MFA, so come hang out with the team, and we'll see you the same time tomorrow for yet another feature drop.